We come across new problems every single time. And yeah, <laughs> you have to correct it, you know, anyhow. Having wrongly configured PV inverters translates to having no power being available at the outputs of our distribution box. So we have a three phase load and then we have three single phase loads. Let's wait and watch. First we get them commissioned and then we'll show you. Hi, I'm Damien and I uh, do IT work and other things over here at Off Grid Europe. Hey there, I'm Pilal, I am studying Renewable Energy Masters and at the moment I'm doing um, an internship here in Off Grid Europe as a Renewable Energy Intern. Today we're going to be talking about commissioning, what it is, why we do it and how it sits in the context of the whole process of the Off Grid containers. We've got about 3,000 individual components that go into a system. That all is put in before we actually start our work. We go in the container, we check that everything is physically the way that it should be, that all the equipment and connections are secure. Here we've got our various testing apparatus. Solar inverters and solar panels. That's our main primary source of energy. And the second, the second is battery inverters. And of course having bank of batteries in the case where we not only use utilize the, the solar power but we also charge the battery so that at night time so when it's dark outside it's not dark inside exa exactly exactly <laughs> and then the third very important thing is having a distribution distribution board they each rely on the other parts in order for the whole system to work correctly so we have got right now um as i can show you this is our main cluster this is being powered up and the green indication means is this um, being powered on. The, the orange indication says the batteries are being charged and they're under 50%. So right now it's being charging, it's charging the batteries, which you can see here. And also this, uh, a master cluster is in sync with the recession cluster. We can see with the green light. So they both have communication between each other using these, um, these purple wires. So they communicate. And right now we are charging both batteries for both clusters using our grid there. We bring the components online one by one. We program them as is necessary. We're testing the functionality. We're trying to recreate the scenarios and test the equipment. We're looking at the output of the system from the most basic thing that are actually having power output from the system. The solar inverters and the solar panels. If there's a problem with that, what are we looking at? Like, Basically, looking at having no power input, we no power in to our system to be powering our loads. Having wrongly configured PV inverters translates to having no power being available at the outputs of our distribution box. We just lose the main primary source of our energy, and we don't have a way to charge up the batteries. Exactly, like exactly. Have... Yeah, we just just no way out. Well, you, you do have a way, but. Uh, if, you're just running a generator. It's not a very great thing to do. This is the load distribution box, and basically through the villages we are going to be using, like for example, these for the street lights, and then for the loads. So villages will be connected to these lines, and the street lights for the villages will be connected here. And then this connection is coming from our cabinet too, which is Raspberry Pi, and then everything is controlled by our Adam. So Adam will switch um, these individual phases to these connections and we control this by the relays. So this basically is the, the heart, you can say like the output, the loads uh, for the villages. And yeah, right now it's just upside down, but yeah, we'll, we'll get tested, once we get tested, we'll just show you. So we have a three phase load, and then we have three single phase loads. So let's wait and watch, first we get them commissioned, and then we'll show you. We just, um, by the off controller, we had our modules loaded, and from there you could just control any load, whatever you have, anywhere in the world, and you can also monitor them. It's that simple. The problem we have, really, is that if you've got something that is safe, it means that if something is wrong, it won't run. And three main systems depend on each other. Without the battery inverters working, then the solar inverters aren't doing the job as well. Of course, um, and then we are basically losing the whole idea of off-grid system because um, then it would be we're just a battery dependent it's on standalone grid where we're, we we will definitely be going to be in a situation where our batteries are going to be deeply discharged yeah. and then we don't have any of the source to charge yeah. them up and if we have like the distribution box and the optional generator connection 
If that isn't working, then we can have a fully functional system that just doesn't supply power. It sits in the container, it doesn't go anywhere. And we've got the off-grid control. It lets us do things beyond what you would be able to do just using physical hardware, the switchboards that we've got installed there. So Exactly, you know, this is, I think this is something more versatile and which can which integrates different devices, having different communication protocols. Through that, we can we are able to not just monitor the data, we can also control devices remotely. It's very important when we think about sites which are, which are far away and they're, they're scattered and we need to have a complete control over certain, certain situations. Damien, yeah. what are the challenges you are finding when um, testing the containers? Um, things not wired as they should be, cables that aren't fully connected or that arrive partially broken, software problems, <laughs> oh, there's uh, lots of new ones, we come across new problems every single time, the general physical ones from a screw being loose to um, a cable having a, a break in it to sort of IT problems where we don't have communications or you have difference in the version of the software on some of the inverters or other hardware we've got on here or everything seems to work fine until a set series of events happens and then they don't work. So it's interesting, <laughs> it always stays interesting but the, there's lots of challenges with it. I think it's a very good thing that we're getting together here and we're actually making sure they're all up and running before they get shipped out. Uh, yeah, it's the closest I think we can get to making something plug and play when it's something so big and so much power for a village. I mean, when we start pre-commissioning, there are like a lot of checks to be made in each of the cabinets. But of course, as like Damien said, I mean, I think in, personally, it's part of the process. You need to be, you need to be making sure that uh, wires are, are properly connected and so that when we power these devices, it just makes um, the commissioning lots easier. And also once we got this power on, we can actually see this in our fleet controller. But I think that's the whole beauty of this um, container commissioning. You actually come across a lot of new, new challenge, new stuff, I think, I should say, new mistakes. And <laughs> yeah, you have to correct it, you know, anyhow. So you're on your own, but I think it's, it's just part of, part of the process. And, Get, it gets exciting at times, but at times it just really gets over your head and you really feel like it should have been much easier. But what can I say? It is what it is. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel to not miss the next episode.